Hi there. Today we're going to be talking about the Timber Tough Automatic Chainsaw Sharpener. Before we start, always make sure you're wearing safety glasses when using this sharpener. So on the sharpener, here are the basic things. You got two dials on the front, a pitch, and a length. You have your LCD screen on the top that has a reset, a plus, a minus, and a start button. We'll get into all that stuff later. You have a wedge right here, your grinding stone, your epoxy photo sensor, and on the back is where you plug your power into and is where your on off switch is. So now let's go ahead and load your chain. The first thing you want to do when loading your chain into your chainsaw sharpener is count how many cutter teeth you have. Your cutter teeth are these things here that actually are the teeth that cut wood on your saw. So I pre-counted this chain here. This chain here has 36 cutter teeth. So what go ahead here is go turn your machine on here in the back and go in and use the plus and minus button to enter in how many cutter teeth you actually have. So this here chain has 36, so we're gonna adjust this all the way up to 36 cutter teeth, and now we're ready to put our chain into our sharpener. So, as you can see, we wanna make sure we get our cutter teeth at the same angle as our grinding stone, otherwise you'll be cutting on the back side of your cutter teeth and that'll ruin your chain very quickly. So there's a little groove here on your saw, that you want to just go ahead and slide this chain into. It's going to fall into place nicely. Once it's in place, you should be able to slide it freely like this. We want to make sure our wedge is up forward, pushing the chain so that I can push the chain along nicely. So now we're going to go into how to actually adjust the head. Now that we've loaded our chain into our sharpener, there's a few things we got to go over. So setting your pitch, length, and depth. So. The first thing we want to do is make sure the machine's on here in the back. Make sure we have our correct cutter teeth set. So this chain 36 for instance. The first thing we want to do is we're going to go over the LCD screen. We have a reset button, a plus button, a minus button, and a start button. The reset button we are going to use to reset the machine every in between checking each cutter tooth. The plus button we're going to use to lower the head. The minus button we are going to use to move the wedge forward, moving the chain along on the sequence. And the start button to start your machine. So first of all, we have to make sure our, our head is aligned with our cutter tooth. As you can see here, this cutter tooth is not aligned correctly. So we're going to hit reset, you're going to see five dashing lines. We'll wait until those go away and then hold down the minus button. What that's going to do is push our head forward into a cutter tooth that our head is aligned with. So once a once our grinding stone is aligned with the cutter tooth, we want to go ahead and lower our grinding stone, and we're going to do that by hitting, hitting and holding the plus button. The grinding stone here is going to go ahead and go forward and back like this. Once the grinding stone is down in the groove, you want to let go, and that's how you're going to see where your cutter tooth is sitting on your grinding stone. So as you can see here, we have just a little bit of room here, so we want to use our length to adjust how far our wedge is pushing it forward. So it needs to go ahead a little bit further, so we're going to adjust our length. And we're going to push the wedge closer to the grinding stone, which moves the cutter tooth closer to the grinding stone. And we're going to do that by turning it just slightly clockwise. If we want to go take the cutter tooth away, then we would go counterclockwise with the length. So this one is set here just about right just taking off roughly at that two thousandths of an inch. Don't want to take off too much, don't want to take off too little. Our pitch is adjusting how far back our wedge is going back here on the chain. And that here, once you hit reset, as you can see, it's in between the grooves, so it sits very nicely. So that is set. So now we're going to check our depth. So we're going to go through and cycle a couple times just to check a couple more teeth to make sure our length is correct. Lower the head. Now your depth is on the back. What you want to do is you want it so it's just not touching the bottom, but so it's just barely, barely touching on the middle. That way you're taking off that roughly two thousandths of an inch. So once you have determined that you have your grinding stone set correctly with your length, pitch, and depth here in the back. We want to go ahead and cycle through a couple more times and check a couple more teeth just to make sure that you have your grinding stone set correctly and that you're not taking off too much material. Okay. 
If you do a lot of hand sharpening at home with a hand file, what you're going to have to do is not all of your cutter teeth are going to be exactly the same. So what you're going to have to do is go ahead and find your cutter tooth that has the most material off in it and then go ahead and use that cutter tooth to set your grinding stone and cycle through your chain a couple times. Each time that you have to cycle through your chain, you're going to have to just slightly adjust your length. That way you're just taking off a little bit at a time. Now that we've properly set up our cha automatic chain saw sharpener, we can go ahead and hit start. So now that you've hit start, what's going to do is going to cycle through a couple times, just like you did when you set it up. What it's doing is moving the chain along slightly, and what this photo sensor here is doing is seeing which way your cutter tooth is facing and which one it is. So that way, it's going to cycle through a couple times, and that's that's why the head knows which way to turn. As you can see here, it's only taking off roughly two thousandths of an inch. We don't have too much sparks going. If you have way too many, shut it down by hitting reset immediately. Now I'm going to talk about how to set the angle of your grinding stone according to your chain. So first of all, what you want to do is, is when you buy a new chain, this for example is an Oregon, is you want to look here at the top. On the top, it here tells you how many drive lengths you have, your pitch of your chain, and the gauge, and the file size you should use. So once you find that out, you want to go to page 8 of your owner's manual, and that will tell you what degree to set it on. Now once you find out what degrees to set it on, like this one here, needs to be set at 30 degrees. Up here is where your dial is. There's a set screw here and a set screw here. All you do is simply loosen and tighten each one of these set screws to follow your line along to find your appropriate degrees. And now for cutting off the rakers off your chain. So, the rakers are the things that are in front of the cutter teeth on your chain, and the rakers determine how much wood you cut when using this chainsaw. So, first of all, you need to change your grinding stone. So, in your owner's manual, follow the steps on page 6, and that will show you how to set it and how to change grinding stone. So, first of all, you want to shut the rotating head off. So, what you do is you go ahead and hold down reset until a screen that comes up that says F, on, or off. Now what you want to do is hold down the start button. And now off or on will be flashing. You want to make sure that it is off when dealing with cutting off the rakers. So then go ahead and hit start again, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. So once again, you want to count how many cutter teeth you have on your chain, and then you go ahead and put in how many using the plus and minus button here on the LCD screen. So once we do that, once we have the head rotating off, we have our new file or new stone in. We want to make sure that we have our safety pin in here to assure that the head will not rotate. Now, when setting this, it's the same settings, except when dealing with the rakers, you just want to take off again one to two thousandths of an inch. So, when setting this, we're going to go through the same process and hit reset, hold down the, and go ahead and move it along, and then of course hit plus button to lower it. As you can see on the back side of this grinding stone there's a little groove and you just want to be able to have your riker barely touching it just to take off a little bit. You want to have the riker just in front of that or and touching that groove that way it evenly cuts. So once you return them, this one here is set. So I'm going to hit reset, let the sharpener go through its cycle and then once again hit start. Once again, even though you turn the rotating head off, the sharpener is going to go through a couple of its own cycles so that the photo sensor can go ahead and still read out where it is, the chain, where the chain is, and for the wedge to push forward. So as you can see now, once the sharpener decides to go and start grinding, it's only taking off just a little bit. You don't want to take off too much, otherwise it could get dangerous on your side. 